Soviet task force returning to, to the, the FIBA, which is the forward edge of battle area. Now, while he's taking his position, I'm just going to tell you today, there is three or four different radio nets that you're going to hear. Now, they would not be able to hear each other. There'll be the gun net, the battery net, and the infantry net. Now, to, so you can get a feel of what's going on, we've put them over the channel system. So obviously, they're all going to sound like they'll connect to you. Bear with it. Yeah, they're all going to get you a better feel of the situation. Now the Soviets come back and they're wrecking and challenging. And now they're taking the other side of the ship. On the forward edge of battle area. Now it's time to, to put the, the Russians back in the place where they came from. Now Napoleon was a great believer in the artillery as the old weapon. And any good forward attack needs artillery support. So before any forwards, the, the artillery need to get their guns into action ready to support the forward thrust, to pick a position to be able to put his gun battery in. Obviously in a small arena, it's very difficult. Number one is the uh, first in charge of the gun. He can be either a bombardier or a sergeant. Number three is the gun there. You might be talking about the gun. 
engaging over a zero roger out that's the infantry unit now informing his higher authority that they've been under attack they've hit the enemy and that his artillery one grid two three five seven eight nine altitude two zero splash out eight g two and a half square l85 quick Charge four, number one, load. Through yeah. one. A bearing three, four, nine, seven mils. Elevation two, five, five mils. At my command, number one, I just fire. Through one. is over 14 kilometers away. It's taking a time of flight of 35 seconds from firing. 470448. Blue Archway to advance on target. Now the final throws and their infantry are just about to bayonet charge and do their final assault.
One of the handicaps of being in our firing for artillery is the advances of detection equipment to support the Soviet forces. We're fired, they're bound to now know where the guns are, and they're likely to walk an I see that was out. Not only have you been deprived of this quarter of an hour of ring time, you've come in like away. Come on, on the double time, Major. Vehicles, a 1918 vehicle. Um, obviously, at the time, there were very limited military vehicles as such, and so you'll note that the markings on this vehicle uh, culminate with up to a recently the most mass produced vehicle ever. It's got to be right and, uh, Henry Ford once said you could have them in any colour, provided it was black. He didn't know about the khaki ones at the time. But it's a very unusual car to drive. I had the good privilege of driving one three years ago. And um, they haven't got a gearbox as such. They've got a system of clutches. You've got three pedals to control there. One for the brake, one for the reverse gear, another one for the two speeds on the clutch. So you've really got to concentrate what you're doing until you're getting used to it. Now, we did say about the Royal Artillery Quad. This is an artillery quad, this time a Canadian one. The Canadian-built vehicles were some of them among the best of the World War II vehicles. This is a Chevrolet, a Canadian military pattern. It was known as a CMP, and it's the field artillery tractor version. It's got artillery markings on there, and you've got D4 to show that it was D-troop number four gun. Now, the gun on the back is a, a Canadian gun. It was uh, built from a sort of American design and cut down in price, Where? and you put it back into American colors of, once again yeah well she's still going strong good luck to her because a lot of these were bought up after the war and used by farmers and run in the ground and some of these lads found them in the barns etc and as like they say you restored it to the present condition here's one who's got the audacity to say i love lucy on the front and we wonder who lucy is another one in usa markings a slightly darker green in color than the other and uh, what did do they know any history on this one? None at all, actually, but it's 1944, Willie. It's 1944, Willie. Yep. No, Jim. Good for you, mate. And, of course, it's right-hand drive, which is um, unusual for the big American stop car, so there must be a history to that one. I think it was in Singapore or something like that somewhere. Now then, we've got a, something different now. This is a big a Plymouth speed bump. The, uh, the owner has just gone with the other car. I don't want to know Jim's history. I want to know the car's history. I've I'd rather not discuss Jim's history in public. Limited history on this one. World War II. Some of them had a big uh, thing going upwards for cutting wire because um, the enemy had a, an awful habit at one time to um, put wire across to take the heads off the drivers. But we um, haven't got one of those Jeeps here now. He's got a rather mixed crew on board, hasn't he? Now then, we've got a couple of half tracks coming now. Identical? Not quite. The first one is a white half-track, and the second one's an international half-track. Now, these half-tracks were built in America, under license, uh, because they love it. Here's one of the famous Jimmys, or douche and a half. It's a two and a half ton uh, American Army vehicle, the most common lorry, I think, of World War II. It was built by General Motors of uh, America, which was uh, the parent company of Vox. Well, that's a good idea. You're a, you're a creep. <laughs> good for you, mate. Oh, now, now, what have we got here? With, the With his ammunition box on the front, good. done up in, ah, not the same American Army. Well, 1942, 1942 again, but why have you got a blue number on the side, you tell these people? Yeah, uh, because in 42 Some and point. early in the war, they had a blue number and then later they found out that it was really quite indistinguishable. So they changed them all to white. And easier to get white paint, I spent, wouldn't it? Yeah. Ah, see, they were left, this is waiting for a more interesting story than that. Now then, we've got quite a nice little vehicle, a lovely example of the Kubelwagen. And this is the, what Germany used a lot of, is the, um, and who do you represent? <laughs> German army? <laughs> Just that's near enough. You haven't got a German accent. But this is a BMW flat twin with a, with a sidecar and um, it's shaft drive. You haven't got a reverse on this one. Yeah. You've got a reverse. There you go, look. Not very... But I'm sure it will be sad news to many of you. The final score of the World Cup, Brazil 2, Germany 0. Invented with a British invention. The first one, I think, was called the Mother. 
been the mother of invention. And then you just mow them down at will. But if they're coming to your face with armor, then uh, you do stand a better chance. But these lads are feeling quite safe. They've got their heads up in the air, whereas the, I'm sure that if shot for going their way, And we want to put a call out for the driver of the Studebaker Weasel, the little track laying vehicle that came around earlier. It was noticed uh, by a member here that you had a leakage. Fuel or water, we do not know, but uh, just to draw your attention to it. That's the driver of the Weasel, you, they didn't notice the leak. Anyway, our entry are now coming up off the tank, getting down as low profile as possible, flat on the road. Come on, lads, down you get lower than that. On your belly. Make as small a target as possible. They will go one section at a time, otherwise if they're all on their feet at the same time, one sweep with a machine gun would take a lot out, whereas there is a chance they go in sections, if you only lose half of them. As I said, the bouncing over open ground is uh, suicidal under any conditions, but the tank is uh, certainly great help to get them close at hand. Of course, the tank can always fire and pin down the enemy. But for the open beaches, uh, when you visit those beaches and look inland and realize how vulnerable you were from uh, the defenses by the Germans there, it made you realize how... Uh, what those uh, soldiers had to go through. Looks like they've taken over the uh, post here now. Searching the... And I'll put out an announcement now to interest to all children on the field. When the tanks have finished going around, We've got something of interest for the children, so make sure you're around the ring to hear that very important announcement to you, children, after the tank break. Here they come, our two successful stewards. It's slightly different, with a different turrets on them, but mechanically they're the same. Twin V8 powered. American, very quick tank. coming over the bigger one now, that was based on the old Sherman shop. Yeah, I forgot the number. Shout to me, David. What number is it? We have a nice display of armor coming around by the comes box now is an armored gun hauler, the M5. the white half track and white of America with a big uh, radial engine, a lot of these, with the aircraft engine, nine-cylinder radio.
Next to the one he's pulling that up. Yeah. Uh -huh.